If you like the video, we request you to like and subscribe to the Agile Mania YouTube channel to encourage us to provide more valuable information on Agile and Scrum. So let's start to revise with whatever we saw on coaching from the day one. Okay. So what is coaching on its essence, you know, your definition? What is coaching? Unleashing coach? the potential. Ah, okay, fine. Okay, and bringing sorry. the best out of somebody. Okay, great. Any other inputs? Giving direct solutions, but probing deeper. Exactly. So we have to unleash the potential, but not providing any guidance, directions, advice, solutions, rather bringing it from inside, right? Be it individual or for organization or for team, we are going to derive the best and we are going to enable them from the current state uh, to the enabled state with unleashing their potential by themselves. Okay. So what are all the skills we should possess to do this? Self-awareness. Uh, very nice. Yeah. Great to start with self-awareness. <laughs> Listening. Okay. Not being biased. Not being biased. Great. Anything yeah. else, dear friends? Oh, empathy, uh, mind emotional, mind. emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence. Yeah. Growth, mindfulness. Growth mindset. Yeah, we saw even what is difference between mindfulness and self-awareness, isn't it? Great. And... What is the tool you are having? What is that skill you should continuously uh, you know, enrich for you to become a coach? Powerful, powerful questioning. questioning. Great. Unanimously. Powerful questioning. Right? So what is powerful questioning? Which makes you think? Hmm. Open-ended open questions. Open-ended questions. Open-ended questions. Future-oriented. Not oh, touching no. the ego of the opponents. Exactly. Not touching any emotional state rather to make them neutralized and bring out the thinking process, isn't it? And one of you said open-ended, yeah. So uh, it should be open-ended, right? Widening the mind. Uh, but you have to frame the sentence in the way that they are able to open up their mind, go for deep thinking, isn't it? And one more said future-oriented. That's very important. So the other roles are, uh, you know, maybe current or past or in, say, everyone is in the best interest of you. But coach role is the one who is always take you towards the future. Okay. Uh, so that's, that's a very unique thing. So they won't, you uh, know, keep on diving. What happened to you in, you know, uh, 20 years later? Is it something? So they, that is also one type of uh, skill that is counseling, right? Clinical uh, counseling and so on. So they will find out is there any childhood traumas or any other uh, you know, past references. But this coaching is, this one is very applicable for two places. One is problem solving. The second one is decision making. Okay. So wherever you need this, you can go for this. If uh, some people having a pattern of some illness, they can go for other uh, patterns also. Okay. So we saw four major roles, right? So what is difference between a trainer and a coach? Training is short term, coaching is much long term. Long term. Okay. Training means sharing the specific knowledge. Knowledge. Mm-hmm. And great. coaching is to get the clarity from the clients. Yeah, great. For a trainer, you have to be an SME. For a coach, you need not be an SME. Not be. Okay, perfect. And uh, one more difference between mentor and coach. I know major of Will Sandwich, but what is the major difference between mentor and a coach? Mentor uh, is SME, you can say. Yeah, they are SME again for uh, smaller groups, smaller right? Group, yeah. And coaches for, again, they will unleash you in a smaller group, right? But need not to be Mostly, an SME. Uh, sorry? Need not to be an SME, right? You need not to be an SME, correct. Facilitator and coach. How it goes. Who is a facilitator? Who is a coach? A facilitator is an active role, whereas uh, coaching mm-hmm. is a passive role. Mm, actually, it's a very good inference, Advaita. I really love this. Uh, this is your own derivation, but it's so sensible. So it's more active role, right? You have to facilitate everything on front end, isn't it? But this is sort of an you are you are pacifying yourself and you are making their the clients also uh, know uh, to come into a phase where they are able to think and derive the solutions on their own, isn't it? Okay, that's nice, good. And uh, see, you see, a coach will have uh, always have a goal to uh, you know make a growth in you, be it individuals or team or organization. How can I enable from the current state to the future one is a very important uh, goal. The facilitator will not worry about the outcomes. They will just facilitate the system. 
whatever the outcomes you are getting it's it's just you no know, up to you so they are not worried about what angle or decision you are taking okay okay what is difference between a counselor and a coach counselor, counselor will show you the problem the coach will give you the solution will they will try to derive the solution by yourself right but they will right. uh, yeah. envision the problem right yes. but we will envision the state here right in as in coach good very nice Okay, the final one. What is the difference between a consultant and a coach? Consultant will consultant. be solution and uh, ah, okay. It will also uh, tell you how to do that. Okay. And what is the roadmap? And he will uh, help you throughout the journey and uh, doing doing things for you. Hmm. Yeah. And the coach is okay, guides you. You can do this way or this way. Okay. But he hmm. will not be doing actually. Consultant will just highlight the problem. Hmm. Won't be interested in the solution unless asked. Yes. Uh, in consultant may highlight the problem and give you solution as well, help you implementing that as well. <laughs> But the coach is will probe you and you know give you the solution yourself. You have you take out the solution from yourself. Right. So so we have seen that coaching works really well in whatever the parameter is. But what is the reason that it is working well? Because it is derived from the place where it is occurring. Right. It's so realistic. Right. See. solution from outside may or may not work sometimes it will work well and good sometimes may not go but probability of getting it implemented and getting best results of the solution will be uh, will be there when we are deriving the solutions from inside isn't it not from outside so that's why we prefer uh, uh, coaching skills as an agile coach in an organization because say like like uh, the <clears throat> what to say uh, the fingers that what to say that fingerprints fingerprints sorry thank you so much priyanka <laughs> like fingerprints like you know every organization is unique isn't it we are not the same the culture is different the uh, uh, the dynamics is different so we cannot take uh, one place it work for me okay take a, can i take a solution and deploy it in other place it may or may not work but if you are deriving it from the system itself it is more probability that it will work right and also if it fails and also it's their own solution so they will have accountability to course correct it immediately and grow for growth faster right and that's why we need growth mindset as a fixed mindset am i right okay great so this revision is done yeah so powerful questioning framing questions perfect and now when you go for coaching conversation what is uh, you know how you are going to implement this coaching skill in your system okay practically is if someone comes to you and ask any question directly on agile knowledge okay not on agile implementation or customization but on agile knowledge you being there as an agile coach you are accountable to say the knowledge exposure to them right so it's perfectly fine you become a mentor at that case but except that scenario for all other cases happening in organization be it leadership versus teams or teams conflicts or team conflict between team members or between teams or between stakeholders and the team or team to any other parties be it any uh, no uh, happenings be it on uh, no um, any conflicts or change management or uh, no decision making or problem solving so in all these cases people comes to you you have to immediately switch yourself as an coach role so we saw that four mandatory skills right you have to primarily in facilitation and uh, pro- coaching zone professional coaching zone okay, okay. A very minor times you used to you can be in this zone where teaching and mentoring so i used to say practically when we go for no we will do days of training only right we cannot do months of training for any or system right so days of training for a team weeks of mentoring for the team and months and years for facilitation and coaching for the team so this is the pattern can you remember this days weeks and months and now so apart from this whatever comes to you you have to switch your shoes into coaching zone okay so make them so yesterday as we conducted uh, no you can have your own coaching model so what models you have chosen some sample models pro and pro pro cigar okay, so you have framed your own powerful questions also right yes okay, now we yes. will have an overview on that coaching arc so how to start a coaching conversation by asking questions correct so powerful questions will be the throughout thing for an coach but how to start a conversation what are all the that coaching arc which we saw right okay let me recall it coaching conversation arc so what will the coachy will do 
while coming they will vent right so coach should actually welcome them given disclaimers of what coaching conversations is all about and get some confidential information and then you have to switching into listening zone you can take a note of this steps to conduct coaching conversation first is uh, you know giving disclaimers what are all the disclaimers we said so in my yesterday i conducted one live coaching conversation isn't it i said okay welcome magesh so um this is con- this will be kept confidential whatever been discussed here will not be shared elsewhere without your permission right and then one more disclaimer you can provide is so this is coaching conversation do not expect any upfront solutions rather the solution may emerge out of this conversation right because not everyone will have an exposure towards coaching skill so some will come to see can yesterday someone said right you are an agile expert you have to answer this question can be in straight ask we are there but not for you no know, all these scenarios and you no know, uh, profiles so after this disclaimer make them settle ask them okay what something in your mind okay so then from then you are going into listening book and the coachy will keep on venting so what we are doing at that time we are mindfully listening to the client right to their clues whatever they are saying okay so usually if you see in in that uh, uh, initial statements there will be few words which will be very important words so i used to call that as bright spots okay this is bright spots for example a person is coming to you he is saying hey, i am so frustrated to going go for office in these days um so in it was not earlier but these days it's so frustrating so the word is keep on repeating okay so you can expand on that word okay what makes you feels frustrated can be your next powerful test okay so you can just take them by what is the words and clues they are providing so as i said you should speak the minimum right 10 minutes 15 minutes that's all more should come from the client coach even will be keep on narrating and articulating the topic and when they are speaking you can continuously ask powerful questions you can recall what is their agile goals or common goals career goals and what is their previous action on that where they stand so you can recall that why so with that only we can see what is the current reality isn't it so next is coaching through powerful questions and envisioning no not power problem solving can you see envisioning they are envisioning the current state of the client to themselves in the clearest picture okay so over the hump so why we call that over the hump why it is a hump why it is not a straight line because humans when they talk take a topic and expand 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 it's like you know initially it will be like this clock and then expand 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 at one point their mind will be oh yeah right that aha moment will will be arrived i have to t- i forgot this you know uh, stands right i didn't see this in this perspective at all uh, i never thought about this so these are all the sentences which will give you that words yesterday also after our coaching conversation practice someone said that words i was so happy to hear that one said that okay now i have have some clarity on my problem that's a, that is enough for a coaching conversation if you are having clarity on your problem you can derive the solutions by on your own right and second one is like someone said okay i feel good now after this discussion these are all the clues that you have really expanded their mind okay so clarity uh feeling good right and uh, the cla- uh, that what to be done so once they receive that state only humans can go for actioning phase now brainstorming or actioning okay so that's why we are that's an another arc keeping the momentum going supporting helping them to celebrate so what we have to do is you have to ask questions pertaining to that okay now with this clarity and realization what something comes to your mind has to take as a small step and then getting into action so um, who will be accountability who is your accountability partner and uh, what support you need to get into action okay and ending when you want to meet it again so what support you need from me and uh, when you want to meet again to consider you uh, know to continue this coaching conversation okay so this is a complete coaching arc revision done so now where you are applying your goal or sigur model throughout this can you see here yes a if the client is starting with the current reality then you can ask question once they are clear about their current reality you can ask their goal or if a client is starting with the goal and then you can ask the current reality but other steps are almost the same then uh, know what to say um, what are all the options review right 
what are all the gaps action review you can proceed with that so this models will be initially helpful for you to navigate the conversation because the problem is like when you start with an agile coaching skill see the, the client will come up with the problem you have to insightfully listen to them isn't it meanwhile you should also frame that powerful questions am i right so which one you will do doing dual things will be little tricky for you at the initial phase until you are practicing some 60 70 hours of coaching conversations so that's why initially we we suggest you to go by your model so as i said clarify yesterday it is not mandated for you to follow step by step questions whatever you are written in your coach backlog rather customize the uh, that will be your guiding uh, okay guiding one so you can customize the powerful questions based on the client what saying this will become a handbook okay from this you can easily derive some questions until you are on your own. okay good any questions or uh, clarifications related to coaching conversations please now when we schedule such sessions how much is the ideal duration so minimal according to icf international coach federation they used to say uh take at least minimum of 28 minutes which is half an hour almost right uh two two time is not determined so for icf it's 45 minutes for the client some clients it may go for even one hour one and a half it depends but uh, usual time they say minimal take 28 minutes because that will in, ensure that you are going through this complete arc not as partial in deep so what i do personally is i ensure that for my teams where i am consulting we we create a coaching conversation schedule in a disciplined way whoever is my stakeholders for example with my scrum masters with my uh, no the product owners or leaders uh, my engineering managers the two hours your stakeholders you create it if you are a scrum master have coaching conversation with your team members at least for 15 minutes sprint once it will be so powerful in increasing the engagement and collab you no know, relationship in your system okay so you will see the difference before and after coaching conversation um i forgot to record this statement and just before few you no know, one and a half months one scrum master you no know, call me and he said see but i am seeing a very good difference between after i have um, you no know, uh, conducting the coaching conversation with my team members there is lot of engagement psychological safety being arrived due to this as was a feedback from him so likewise you can fix all the dysfunctions you are happening in your system also okay uh, i have a question here uh, so i'll give you a scenario like yesterday i had discussion with rahul mm-hmm. so rahul being a manager is handling everything and i being a coach uh, helping him in order to derive the solution now if the client is not understanding or if the problem is with the client in that case does that make sense for me to have a conversation with client directly after two or three rounds of discussion with rahul if the things are not working out there okay i will give you two important message here please note that the first message very clearly so whoever is coming to you with the issue it already means that they have coaching readiness means they are ready to discuss with you and take at least some steps to overcome their current issue isn't it so who is your client first hand client for you so sometimes it may happen that client may not directly come to us it no, could I be an internal but, but just be with me who is your first hand client rahul rahul so whom you should ca- uh, no address this issue is rahul's issue on current state can you understand see here like we saw one example this morning for uh, systems design or systems view right so it is not that you are going to jump into the project and you are going to work there right as a coach your perspective is the cloud view in a coaching conversation going and sorting that problem is not your uh, responsibility rather how to help people to people to handle the problem is your accountability can you make a difference So now yes. today, okay, great. You you will be able to go. But sometimes, uh, I mean, why I came to this question? Partner, right. Mm, so yeah, yeah. Why I came to this question? Because uh, when I was working in a previous assignment, so there uh, were a set of scrum masters who had certain d- doubts and they discussed with the agile coach. And uh, when uh, it was not getting figured out with the product owners, they requested the coach to have that conversation together along with the product owner and scrum master. so sometimes it could be a conflict management kind of scenario 
so it may be internal to the organization for example there is a dedicated coach to a company and dedicated roles so within that organization if something actively has to be looked upon as we mm. see the jd is typically designed mm. so mm. in that case does that make sense to uh, intervene over there or refrain ourselves from uh, such kind of open communication with a broader groups that's what i was about to say the second part i, I didn't complete yours right so when people come to you the rogul came to you right first handle rogul's approach towards that problem that should be your goal on conducting coaching conversation so he will take one or two steps out of that coaching conversation okay let him go implement it come with the feedback next time next time as you said two sprints down the lines from masters were not able to handle so now you can ask the your first hand client permission rogul uh, so um, do you need my help to uh, no engage in this yes then you are that's in your span of uh, influence right you can approach any of that product owners or stakeholders whoever it is to uh, get it done you can take it to that level there is no restrictions that you shouldn't but please understand that you are not here to solve all the problems you are helping people to solve the problems so if that is not working then you can you are you are again helping here right you are not intervening in giving you any solution but you are engaging and you no know, in with your uh, mm, <clears throat> the powerful coaching skill you are helping them to overcome that you can do that but the first approach is but always coach the client not coach client 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 <laughs> so this was a very very important message my uh, my mentor also taught me so there was one condition there, there was one girl who came and she was like you know complaining always my husband is like this my husband is less this is this long list okay so in the coaching conversation she always ensured that she is coaching this person approach towards that husband can we change anything on that husband no we don't have that at least in an organization you have an empowerment to go and reach to people and speak in that case we are not so she always used to repeat coach the client problem not the problem don't dive into their problems okay then you then you are not helping them to solve the problem isn't it yes. was that okay advait was it clear? yes yes fine perfect any other questions please okay now um, do you remember the pass we performed yesterday and we will just recreate it clear on coaching confident so on sometimes uh, you know uh, let's say the organization is uh, newly getting started or you know completely okay. revamping itself okay. and uh, from a coach there is an expectation that uh, mm. he should design the frameworks the value streams Mm. how the policies should be in terms of processes so there is going to be an active role mm. uh, and then uh, when the teams are onboarding it it's getting evolved into a actual coaching mm. so this is something yeah. that that when uh, the coach has to work with the business closely and mm. get it incepted initially mm. so uh, that's why we have that stands up why do you remember see if you are a pure professional coach in market you need only coaching skill you doesn't need other skills but being as an agile coach that's why we repeat that four skills right initially you are a trainer to give them the agile knowledge to even from the leadership to the team level right and then you have to convert yourself as a mentor as an active role as you said right sit with them and then frame customize the framework collectively with lot of brainstorming and you no know, doing all those practice, setting up things and then when the team gets settled even when the team is formed and you no know, for some months you are as a mentor as i said yesterday at least for two sprints you are acting as a mentor and then switching yourself into coaching zone isn't it so this is the pattern that's why we say all this four is important so uh, you know some something is done initially and now we have team in place so mm-hmm. when we say that you know we consulted with the team now the members are shuffled there are no members mm-hmm. which were there earlier so we have evolved mm-hmm. in terms of development the kind of work is also evolved so is there a point uh, in the journey in the organization where we retrospect everything and revamp ourselves maybe in terms of framework continuous continuous that's agile right so agile doesn't bring the best solution on the first stand right so it is just giving you the minimal frameworks under its methodologies minimal frameworks for earlier fail feedback right there it's not fail proof it's early feedback being given right so with that introspection continuous deliver the the you know improvement is a continuous process are we good uh, so uh, yeah any other questions yes, yes, 
Mm. What I have observed is, let's say there is a structure. I was work, working with one of the clients. There used to be certain coaches, and I was working as the scrum masters. Okay. So the scrum, scrum, the coaches used to attend the meetings silently, mm. and they used to arrange certain meetings and give the feedback directly. You know, uh, asking certain questions and then giving the feedback directly mm. over a period of time. So, mm. uh, so here, what exactly they are doing is they are not some. I am not going to them. so they are directly giving a feedback so this is also something uh, yes right I, uh, that's why we are switching shoes right here in this case we saw that model sba model do you remember situation behavior impact model for giving and receiving feedback why we need that until they are practicing in that agile tone until they are able to translate that agile values and principles into practice they need a mentor right okay. so for that mentorship no providing and receiving but there is an uh, no ethics in doing that but it is completely fine for a coach to provide and receive the feedback until you are into an maturity level after which you can manage by yourself right but mm. so uh, do you think that the, the the screeners that we run for assessing the maturity mm. uh, asking questions is it effective way mm. uh, to see the team is matured or not certainly right today morning we saw a lot of tools right can you name few what are all the tools we saw at yeah, the cloud uh, model uh, that we see yeah one, one thing and then then now we have a, a graph where storming you know norming yes. segments model right yeah, yeah. Mm. and then i am able to functions of the team and we saw your favorite one others what else maturity model we saw the pyramid like structure yeah where, that is the five dysfunctions of team That's right. One more model we saw. What's that? There is something called com- uh, competing. Uh, you no, know, avoiding. Uh, that is yeah, Thomas Kelman instrument. And we saw Shuhari also, right? Yeah, Shuhari. Correct. Okay, great. Any other questions, please? Magesh didn't conduct coaching conversation yesterday. Okay, that's fine. Priyanka, who was your pair yesterday? Narish. Narish. Niket, who was your pair yesterday? Sandeepan. Udit and Magesh will do the exercise today. Okay. I think we are all set. Any doubts? So you are having twenty minutes today. Why we are having twenty minutes? From yesterday, there will be some carry forward. You will discuss. So fifteen minutes will be very very less. So I am making it twenty minutes. Okay. So any specific topic or whatever we feel. No like. specific topic. You can take any of your professional, personal occurrence you no know, in your happening in your life. And uh, yesterday, who was the client? Today, you become a coach. Hmm. to yesterday's uh, coach will become the client today all set can i open the rooms any other doubts please please take your uh, that model which you built yesterday today's coaches please take that reference with that just execute that conversation once okay one full round from end to end which whatever we saw in the coaching hour okay perfect i'm opening the rooms you can join Bye.